Good morning, Nature Nut. How are we today? Wave if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Awesome. So it has been beautiful these last few days, and I hope you guys have been going outside and enjoying the sunshine. I have, and I have been going to my most favorite natural place in the world, and that is the beach. So I've been spending these last few beautiful days walking along the sand, exploring nature on the beach. And I have come across some really cool things that I wanted to share with you because I love learning about the ocean's critters. And I wanted to learn, help you guys learn a little about it as well. So when I went to the beach, I saw a lot of sand and we've learned that sand helps us to make glass. I saw a lot of rocks and we learned a ton about rocks and what we can do with them last week. But I also saw some beautiful items all along the beach. What do you think I found along the beach? Some seashells. So I'm going to share with you some shells that I found and talk to you a little bit about them. Because believe it or not, every seashell you find once had Earth's critter living inside of it. All different animals live inside these seashells. So some of the seashells I found were these seashells. They're kind of round in shape and they have some lines running across them. These are called clam shells. And inside these shells once lived a clam. It's an animal that we actually like to eat. Clams are pretty delicious. And what's important to know about these clams is they are part of a family called bivalves. And that's just a silly word that means two doors. They have two shells that hold them together. And this is like a protective layer for the animal because the clam is like a squishy, soft animal that would live inside. So every shell you find on the beach once had an animal living inside. And the animal will start out small, and as it grows, the shell grows with it until it becomes bigger and bigger. And clams can actually get about this big. They get really big. But it's important to know that all of those shells had an animal living in them. So this is what a clam looks like on the inside. It has body parts just like we do. Mouth, kidney, heart to be able to have it survive. And when a clam is living in the beach, he likes to dig himself into the sand. He has a little straw that sucks up all the water, brings it inside his little body. He can eat all the little pieces he finds in the water, and then he whoop, squirts that water back out. They also have a foot that they can let out of their shell to help them move along the ocean bottom. So clams are really cool. And there are many different seashells that are part of this two door family. So here is another seashell I found on the beach. And this two door seashell is called a mussel. We like to eat mussels too. So we eat that soft body that's living inside. And mussels live, they like to live together with their friends. So they live in what we call clusters. And sometimes my mussels like to hang out on the rocks in their clusters or on a piece of wood or anything they find. And then animals like to eat them and we like to eat them. There's also two door animals that come in different shapes and sizes. So this one is called a razor clam because it is super thin like a razor, but again, it has two doors. It can open and have that soft body inside. And my razor clam comes in different shapes and sizes too. All of these things I found just exploring the beach and enjoying a beautiful day. There are some really pretty two door shells too. Let's see if I can show you these without the glare. These are called jingle shells. And these jingle shells are the shiniest shell you'll find on the beach. And they come in oranges and black and whites, and these are also part of my two door family. These are my favorite shells um, to look for because they shine in the sunshine. Another shell that I only found one of because they're pretty rare is this beautiful scallop shell. Scallops kind of look like a sun, right? They have the rays of the sun. 
And I only found one scallop shell, but they are part of the two-door family too. So there should be another shell holding that delicious scallop inside, another one we love to eat. But not all of my sea creatures or the shells that I found live in two doors. Not all of them have two shells. Some of them just have one, like the snails you might see in your garden. So one of the shells that I found a lot of are these slipper shells. And these slipper shells have kind of a hole or a cave inside them. And that's where my snail lives. He lives deep inside there so that he can slowly move across the ocean bottom looking for algae and rocks to eat. And again, my slipper shells are gonna grow, start really small. And as they grow, their shell grows with them. And when you find these guys in the water, they're often stacked on top of each other. And that's kind of just how they hang out and get to know each other and make more baby snails too. You'll see them all attached on with their nice strong snail foot in the water. But my absolute favorite seashell to find, and I think the prettiest, is from a snail. And the snail that has these beautiful spiral shells. These are really cool to find and collect. And it also has a little cave or a hole for my snail friend to live in. And once again, they are gonna start out super tiny. And as my snail grows, its shell grows until it gets even bigger. This is the largest snail we can find in New York and it lives in our oceans. This shell broke, but look how big this snail grew. And this snail likes to eat other animals. So this snail might be eating one of our clams or maybe smaller snails, some crabs, and look how big they are. And they have that nice cave to be able to live inside of like a snail. Now, I love these spiral shells. So when I go collecting on the beach, there is one special thing that I like to look for. And it looks a little strange and people don't really know what it is, but it's one of nature's best kept secrets. And it is this. Dun, 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 dun. What is this? This is a strange looking thing that I hunt for when I'm look looking on the beach. And people think, oh, is that a bone? Is that seaweed? What is that? And what it is, is actually the eggs the babies of my giant snail. So what my mommy snail does is attaches the bottom of her egg casing to a rock, lays a whole string of eggs, and then goes about her business. And these eggs stay attached to the rock, moving in the water, taking in some nutrients and growing. And one day, baby snails will come out of it. But sometimes if there's a storm and the ocean gets rough, whoop, maybe these eggs will fall off the rock and they wash up on the shore. And unfortunately, they can't survive out of the water. So everything I collected, I found out of the water. There's no living animals in them. And that's important because we don't wanna take clams from the water because then they can't survive. I wanna collect my shells on the sand where they've already passed. And what's cool about these egg casings is each little pocket, there's a bunch of little pockets, has about 50 to 100 baby snails growing inside of it. And they have so many pockets. So this mommy snail is laying thousands of eggs in hopes that maybe five or 10 will survive because there are so many things in the ocean that want to gobble up all those tiny little baby snails. So would you like to see what's in one of these pockets? Do you want to see the tiny little baby snail shells? Awesome. So what Miss Beth does is she goes along the beach and she looks for these little pockets and then I have to take them home and carefully open them up. So I'm going to get one here. Let's see what we can find. Again, they're just tons of little pockets, like little envelopes to help keep my baby snails shape safe. And there's always a lot of sand and seaweed stuck to them too. But what I do is I carefully crack it open, take a look inside, 
And outcomes, sometimes they're broken, sometimes they're sand, but outcomes, these super duper tiny, tiny, tiny little baby snails. And Miss Beth pours them through a strainer to get all the sand out. And each little pocket can hold, let's see if I can see it, can hold 50 to 100 of those super, super tiny snail shells. Isn't that crazy? And Miss Beth has been collecting these for years. It's her favorite thing. And then I put them in a nice little jar and I have all my tiny little baby snail shells that I collected. And I think it's so amazing that that tiny little baby can try so hard to survive in the ocean and one day become this giant shell. Isn't that nuts? Imagine how hard it would be to be that baby tiny snail in the ocean. So now I have all these amazing shells that I've collected and there's lots I can do with them. All the activities we did with rocks last week, we could do with shells. We can create a sensory bin, washing them. We can sort them by different sizes and shapes. We can play games with them by writing our letters or rolling our dice. And we can even make some beautiful artwork with them. You can make a mosaic, that um, arrangement of shells in your Play-Doh as well. But what I'm gonna make today with all my beautiful shells is another gift for my mom for Mother's Day. And so what I'm gonna make is a seashell wind chime or snow or mobile, excuse me. So what I did is to keep it natural, I went outside and I found two sticks. I tied them together and I chose to use some colorful string because I want it to be a beautiful piece of artwork. And what I did is I glued some of my shells, like my mussel shell or my snail shell, to the ends of my beautiful ribbon. And what I'm gonna use is hot glue. So maybe after you collect your shells, you'll have your parents help you. And I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue, attach it to my clam shell, pick which string I want to attach it to, and glue that on. And then I have this beautiful hanging mobile. So I have a couple more empty strings. So let me add one of my beautiful snail shells here, just using a little bit of hot glue and attaching it to my string. Now, sometimes you can actually find shells that already have holes in them. So you can string them through the holes but I thought it might be easier to show you how to just simply glue them on. And then once I have all my beautiful shells hanging, in the wind, when they knock into each other, they make a nice little noise, a little jingle, so you can make a wind chime. Or you can just have a beautiful hanging piece of art with the wonderful shells that once had Earth's critters living inside of them. So if you do go explore on the beach and you find those beautiful shells, remember, we don't wanna take them from the water because critters are still living in there. We only wanna collect from the dry sand. And we can find our clams, our scallops, our colorful jingle shells, and have an amazing collection to explore. So I hope you liked learning about the beach critters I found. I love exploring the beach. And as summer comes and the weather gets more beautiful, I hope you guys are all exploring nature outside as you can and enjoying your families and staying safe and separate, okay? I miss you guys so much. Go explore. Have a great day. Bye-bye.